we've exiled him, and now he will never be allowed back. Not after it. It was extremely late at night. My parents were out, and I was left alone in the house. For the past couple of weeks, my uncle had been staying around for the winter holiday. My parents quite liked him because they found him funny, but I despised him. Every day, he would always give me this horrid stare. It started off in the direction of my face, but the longer he stared, the further down my body he would look. Disgusting. When I tried to tell my parents about it, they simply laughed and said he's probably just joking or something. He left one morning without anyone seeing him go, leaving a message saying he had to rush out somewhere. I can't recall where. As I lay in bed watching Netflix, I shivered even thinking about him. Suddenly, a notification rang out from my phone. I grabbed it. It was a snap ad request. Immediately, I was distracted as I hit accept and waited for the guy who had added me to respond. Hey X, the message read. I giggled and replied, Hey XX. There was a pause for a moment as his bitmoji waited on the screen, staring at me. I typed, You look really sad. I gasped. I was a little surprised to say the least until I thought about the fact that this guy hadn't seen me. I hadn't even sent a snap yet. Thanks, ha ha. How do you know? He replied. His bitmoji vanished and I was left sitting in chat alone. I put the phone down and for a moment, I thought it was just another guy wanting to play with. My feelings, like always, my eyebrows lifted as another snap came through. It was from him again, though this time it was a snap. Excitedly, I opened it. My entire stomach fell flat with dread as I was looking at a picture of me in bed, staring at my phone. I couldn't move. The flash came from my wardrobe. Who's there? I called out. No reply. Dad? Mom? The wardrobe door slowly began to creak open. I saw the glint of a face emerging from the darkness. My uncle. He stared at me, his mouth widening into a thick and revolting grin. Hello, Jane, he said. Carefully, he crawled out of the wardrobe, stretching as he placed each foot, one by one, onto the floor. He let the phone drop to the floor. I've been so patient. I stared at him, my eyes filled with terror. I quivered and shrank back, slinking to the other side of the bed as I tried to distance myself from him. Under the covers, I held my phone and I began recording a voice message. You, you're a creep, I uttered. He cackled and shifted about in place. Oh, how excited you make me. How excited you've always made me. His laugh came to an abrupt halt as his face dropped in its expression. He looked at me hungrily and I felt tears begin to well in my eyes as I reached the end of the bed. I had to stand up as I left the safety net of my covers. I swept back until my spine touched the wall. He smirked. Where do you go now, Jane? He began, reaching into his pocket. Don't, I shrieked, but he ignored me and continued to stare as he inched towards the pocket. Soon enough, he reached it and clambered on top, moving slowly. Carefully, as if not to disturb me, his hand stayed in his pocket, locked in waiting. Two days, Jane. I've been waiting two days in that bloody wardrobe, but I did it for you. Can't you see that? My skin rippled with fear as I imagined him watching me sleep those two nights, watching me change. Vile, get away, I screamed at him as he climbed down from the bed. He stood in front of me for a moment, saying nothing, only staring at me as I shrank down onto the floor, 
petrified. Suddenly, something snapped in him. Don't you dare speak to me like that, little girl. He grabbed me by the arm and hauled me upwards. Then he threw me to the ground and tackled me as I tried squirming away. He loved it. I almost, almost made it to my feet when he stomped on my back, pushing me down against the floor. Now, Jane, let me show you why you should have stayed silent, wretched little. The noise of the door opening downstairs cut him off. Both of us swiveled our heads to my bedroom door. Immediately, I screamed with all the capacity of my lungs, wailing for my parents to come and help. In an instant, the sound of footsteps came stampeding up the stairs. A tear drooled from my eye. I was saved. I was silenced soon after, with a sharp prick to the head. I woke up what felt like hours later. My parents asked me what had happened, why I was lying on the floor unconscious, and why the window had a gaping hole in it. I leapt into their arms and grabbed my phone. The voice message had recorded everything. As I showed it to them, my mom fled out of the room, tears draining from her eyes as she vomited in the bathroom. My dad, on the other hand, visibly enraged, sprinted to grab the landline. The police arrived around 30 minutes later. My parents showed them the voice message, the smashed window, and the quivering child, me. They then went through and asked each and every one of the family if they had seen my uncle. None of them knew where he was. To this day, we don't. He vanished the morning he originally left. Since then, I have forever remained damaged. I don't trust any man in my family other than my father. And my wardrobe has been demolished and removed from my room. Yet every night, I check everywhere. Who knows? He might be hiding again. Before starting the story, I would suggest you guys go subscribe to the channel. It turns out that most of you guys who watch me aren't actually subscribed. So if you like the content and want to support the channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell. It's free and you can always change your mind later. I was bored. The snowstorm made it nearly impossible for me to leave the house for the past few days. While I had food and mostly everything that I needed, I was at my wits end. I desperately wanted to do something. Being a psychiatrist, I was used to my brain constantly being busy from one appointment to the other. I rarely had time to chill or even to close my eyes for a second. And that was how I liked things. I could have called my patients perhaps, but most had decided to opt out of therapy for the holidays. They felt better with their families, which rendered me practically useless. I hated that, so I decided to try to make myself helpful and not bored. Somehow, I hadn't touched Snapchat in years, so I'm not entirely sure what caused me to download it and not something else. But yeah, it didn't really matter in the long run. I took a few, reached out. I continued, photos and even a video or two of myself grinning at the camera. I was very good at that pretending to be happy. So, since I have nothing better to do, I would love to give everyone advice. I ended my monologue with a wave and rolled onto my stomach, waiting for the DMs to pour in. See, I've always been attractive, which made it fairly easy to find friends like this when I was at my lowest and needed someone to care for. Perhaps still, it was mostly good fun. I just wanted to help people who were struggling during the winter months. Within seconds, my phone pinged. Hi, sorry, but I need someone to listen to me. Can I call you? I hesitated. I knew nothing about this Elias. And well, it was weird to move to the calling phase so quickly. But still, I did want to help. I'd rather text for now. 
but once we know each other a bit better, and I know how to help you, sure. Stranger danger was engraved into me even as an adult. Oh, okay, that sounds good. That was the first time something weird happened. The screen of my phone flickered twice. Colors drained from the messages right in front of my eyes. I was staring at my inbox in black and white. Quite an odd thing. What the? Is this a new filter? Or am I going mad? Within seconds, everything went back to normal. I have a secret, Vicky. Huh? How did he guess my nickname? I mean, it wasn't impossible per se, but still. Would it help you to share it with a stranger? Maybe, but I need to make sure that I can trust you. Okay, that was somewhat specific, but nothing new. I was prepared to tell him an embarrassing, somewhat exaggerated secret of mine. But the screen flickered again. Okay, this is weird. Maybe I downloaded the wrong version of the app. I need you to tell me what happened 10 years ago on this day. Oh, I mean, that was easy. I was in high school, probably getting ready for prom. I didn't remember exactly what I must have been doing, of course. But still, I was in high school, like most other teens my age. Probably out shopping, yes. That's enough information for me. That was a bit odd. I tried to rack my brain, but nothing in particular came up. Maybe this Elias was an old friend who found me and... Persona changed, becoming a caricature of innocence. I posted a long rant about how much I hated everyone, embarrassing myself in front of all my friends. Excuse me now. I will tell everyone what happened 10 years ago. You do remember, don't you? Memories rushed to me, ones of laughter, snow, and pain. Was it really 10 years ago? We were kids, Elias. We didn't mean it. And yet, I did everything he told me. He told me to take pictures with my old stuffed toys, pretending to be a kid. I did it. My online persona changed, becoming a caricature of innocence. As the distorted voice continued to echo from my phone, I realized the dark secret I had been hiding for years was about to be exposed. The truth that haunted my past was now in Elias's hands, and I felt the weight of regret and fear bearing down on me. What had started as a seemingly harmless interaction on Snapchat had turned into a nightmare unraveling the carefully crafted facade I had built over the years. In that moment, as Elias held the power to expose my vulnerability, I knew I had to confront the past. It was time to face the consequences of our childhood actions, even if it meant revealing the painful truth to the world. As the voice persisted, instructing me on what to do next, I braced myself for the storm that was about to engulf my life. Can't believe I'm doing this, but it's been over 10 years. I need to come clean about what happened to Elias Smith, me, and my three friends. I wanted to play truth or dare, but we needed someone who we could embarrass. We were too cool to do stupid things like kiss each other or something. And so, um, we chose Elias who was the loser of our class. He had a crush on me. I dared him to go outside in the snowstorm in his underwear and socks and run up and down the main road, since most cars couldn't drive during that time. I told him that if he did it, I'd date him, though I was just lying. Elias, he went out, but he never made it back. To this day, he's missing and we have no idea what happened to him. I'm sorry, Elias. I really am. I can't believe what I've done, and the guilt has haunted me all these years. I never intended for it to go this far. I didn't mean for you to disappear, and I never thought the consequences would be this severe. I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me, wherever you are. 
As I posted the confession, I felt a mix of relief and dread. The truth was out, but I couldn't predict the repercussions that would follow. I had opened a Pandora's box, revealing a dark secret that had lingered in the shadows for far too long. The weight of my actions pressed heavily on my conscience, and I braced myself for the storm that awaited me. Girl had gone missing, and her photo flashed on the screen. It was a familiar face, but I couldn't place where I had seen her before. The news report mentioned that she had disappeared without a trace, leaving her family devastated. Shaking off the strange coincidence, I hurriedly headed to the hospital, my mind racing with worry for Ethan. The message on Snapchat had left me unsettled, and I couldn't fathom why an unknown person would contact me with such alarming news. Arriving at the hospital, I rushed to the emergency room, only to find Ethan sitting there, unharmed and confused, relieved. I hugged him tightly, questioning the validity of the message I had received. Ethan explained that no such incident had occurred, and he hadn't treated any unstable patient that night. Confused and anxious, I showed him the Snapchat message, but he couldn't recognize the sender's username. Feeling a mix of relief and confusion, we decided to report the incident to the police. As we left the hospital, my mind kept going back to the news report about the missing girl. The face seemed to linger in my memory, but I couldn't pinpoint where I had seen her before. Days passed, and the mystery deepened. The police couldn't trace the Snapchat message back to its source, and the missing girl remained unaccounted for. I couldn't shake the feeling that these events were somehow connected. But the more I delved into it, the more elusive the answers became. Haunted by the uncertainty and the inexplicable message, I grappled with the idea that life's twists and turns could be more mysterious and sinister than I had ever imagined. The normal, boring days took on a new significance, and the worst day of my life had started with a seemingly innocuous Snapchat message, leaving me questioning the boundaries between reality and the unknown. When I heard footsteps entering the house, the intruders were inside, and panic surged through me. I held my breath, trying not to make a sound as they moved through the rooms. The Snapchat messages suddenly took on a chilling reality. The person who had pretended to be a co-worker of Ethan's was, in fact, one of the intruders. They had used the guise of an emergency to lure me away from the safety of the hospital, leaving me vulnerable at home. Under the couch, I clutched my phone, silently praying that the police would arrive in time. The footsteps drew nearer, and my heart raced with fear. I couldn't see them but I could hear their hushed whispers and the occasional creak of the floorboards. As I hid, I thought about the missing girl from the news report. Was she a victim of these criminals? Or was there another sinister connection? My mind raced with unanswered questions, and the uncertainty added to the terror that gripped me. Minutes felt like hours as I waited for the police to intervene. The footsteps eventually faded, and the house fell silent. I stayed hidden, unsure if they were truly gone, or if they were waiting for me to reveal myself. Finally, the sound of police sirens pierced the quiet night. Relief washed over me, but I dared not move until the officers assured me it was safe. When they entered the house, they found evidence of a planned invasion tools, masks, and a chilling determination to harm. The investigation revealed a network of criminals targeting unsuspecting victims. The Snapchat ruse was just one method they used to exploit people's vulnerabilities. 
the missing girl was another victim of their sinister plot. In the aftermath, I grappled with the trauma of the attempted invasion. Life's mysterious twists had taken a dark turn, and I couldn't shake the feeling of vulnerability. The illusion of safety shattered, leaving me with a newfound awareness of the fragility of life and the importance of staying vigilant in the face of unforeseen dangers. Consumed by fear, trapped under the couch as the masked intruder approached. The man with the smile checked every inch of the dining room, his feet now dangerously close to my hiding spot. My heart pounded in my chest, and the seconds felt like an eternity. As he reached the chair, I held my breath, praying he wouldn't discover my presence. The cloth draped over the bottom of the chair concealed the fact that it wasn't touching the ground. It was my only lifeline, a fragile shield against discovery. His footsteps stopped, and the room fell silent. I dared not move, not even to wipe away the tears streaming down my face. I clung to the hope that the police were on their way, that help was imminent, but the moments dragged on, and the fear intensified. Suddenly, the man in the mask with the smile chuckled. It was a sinister sound that sent shivers down my spine. I could feel his gaze lingering, as if he sensed that someone was hiding nearby. I was paralyzed, helpless, and entirely at the mercy of the intruder. Then, to my horror, he knelt down and started to lift the cloth covering the chair. Panic surged through me. Would this be the moment of discovery? The moment when the thin veil of concealment would be torn away? But just as he began to lift the cloth, a loud crash echoed from another part of the house. The man with the smile hesitated, looking towards the source of the noise. It was the distraction I desperately needed. In that brief moment, I mustered every ounce of courage and silently crawled out from under the couch. I pressed myself against the wall, inching away from the dining room. The intruder, still preoccupied with the commotion, didn't notice my escape. As I tiptoed towards the back door, I could hear the police sirens drawing closer. The cavalry had finally arrived. I took a deep breath, relieved that the nightmare might soon be over. The intruders, realizing they were outnumbered, fled into the night. The police secured the area and began their investigation. It was revealed that the criminals had been monitoring their targets, exploiting vulnerabilities, and orchestrating carefully planned invasions. As the adrenaline wore off, I crumpled to the ground, overwhelmed by a mix of gratitude and trauma. The experience had shattered any illusion of safety, leaving me haunted by the realization that danger could lurk even within the familiar walls of my home. The scars of that night would forever serve as a reminder that life's unpredictability could take a dark turn when least expected. Was trapped, blindfolded and bound, unable to make sense of the unfolding nightmare. The muffled sounds of the car's engine and the distant street noises were the only clues to my whereabouts. Panic set in as my mind raced through the possibilities of what might happen next. The car journey seemed endless and the uncertainty of my fate weighed heavily on me. Every bump on the road, every turn, heightened my fear. The bag over my face restricted my vision, but it couldn't dampen the overwhelming terror that gripped me. Eventually, the car came to a stop, and I was dragged out. I could feel cold air against my face as the blindfold was removed, blinking against the sudden light. I found myself in an unfamiliar place. It was dark, damp, and the air smelled musty. My captors wasted no time. They roughly untied me, but kept a tight grip on my arms. 
I struggled to make out details in the dim light, but I could sense the menacing presence of the men who had abducted me. The bag over my face had shielded me from seeing their faces, leaving me with only the echoes of their sinister voices. They led me through narrow corridors, and I stumbled over uneven surfaces, my heart pounding with each step. Fear and desperation clouded my thoughts as I wondered what awaited me in this dark and unknown place. Finally, they pushed me into a small, cold room. The door slammed shut behind me, and I was left alone in the chilling silence. I felt around, trying to understand the dimensions of the room. It was a claustrophobic space, and the walls seemed to close in on me. Hours passed, and the oppressive darkness weighed on me. I couldn't discern if it was day or night. The cold floor sapped the warmth from my body, and the air felt thick with tension. Thoughts of escape, of finding a way out, consumed my mind, but the reality of my captivity seemed insurmountable. As the hours turned into an agonizing wait, I clung to the hope that the police would trace my whereabouts. The fear of the unknown, the desperation to be free, and the haunting memories of that harrowing night intensified. In the pitch black confinement, I braced myself for the ordeal that lay ahead, uncertain of whether I would ever emerge from the darkness that had enveloped my life. Had asked to send a picture of Ethan on the gurney, he had no memory of that message. It seemed that the entire Snapchat message was a ruse orchestrated by the criminals to lure me into their trap. The police launched a thorough investigation into the incident, uncovering a network of criminals involved in abductions and extortion. The men in the masks were part of a larger operation, targeting unsuspecting victims. The timely intervention of the police saved me from a fate that could have been much worse. Reunited with my husband, we faced the aftermath of the ordeal together. The sense of security we once took for granted was shattered, replaced by a heightened awareness of the dangers lurking in the shadows. The trauma lingered, but we sought support to navigate the emotional aftermath of the abduction. As the investigation unfolded, the authorities were able to apprehend the criminals involved. The dark web of their operations revealed a chilling world of exploitation and cruelty. The incident served as a stark reminder that danger could strike unexpectedly, even in the seemingly safe confines of one's home. In the weeks that followed, we focused on rebuilding our lives. Security measures were heightened, and the community became more vigilant. The experience left an indelible mark on my psyche, a haunting reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of staying vigilant in the face of unforeseen dangers. While the scars of that night would always remain, the support of loved ones and the resilience to overcome adversity became crucial in the healing process. The shadows of the past gradually faded as we embraced the strength to move forward, forever changed by the harrowing experience that had tested the limits of our courage and resilience. The chilling experience you went through serves as a stark reminder of the hidden dangers that can lurk in the seemingly ordinary aspects of our lives. The interconnectedness of technology, like Snapchat, can be exploited by those with malicious intent. Your story highlights the importance of remaining vigilant and cautious in the digital age, where seemingly innocuous interactions can have severe consequences. The revelation that the kidnappings were meticulously planned with cold precision adds an extra layer of horror to the narrative. 
it underscores the need for individuals to be aware of their surroundings, employ safety measures, and report any suspicious activity promptly. While your story may lack a traditional moral, its power lies in its ability to shake the perception of a safe and predictable world. It serves as a cautionary tale, urging people to be mindful of their online interactions and to recognize the potential dangers that may be hidden behind seemingly harmless messages. In the end, the profound impact of your experience lies in its capacity to foster awareness and encourage others to take steps to protect themselves. The realization that the world can be much darker than perceived serves as a call to action for individuals to prioritize their safety and the safety of those around them.